Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Comic Book Users. As you can see, we got the whole lineup here today. Uh, today is another one of those great tribute shows where it's all about Mike Plug today. So we got here Kirk and we got Wild Bill here. How's it going, everybody? So uh, we have long talked on this channel about how much we love uh, Mike Plug, and amongst ourselves, uh, we have talked about Mike Plug yeah. on and on and on. Ironically, not a guy who was very prolific. In yeah, not a lot of, of not a lot of airtime. No. Or should, I, or should I say pencil time? He didn't do the superhero stuff. I mean, that's why you're like, you know what? He did really great stuff, but it was all the like, really odd stuff. Like, But he, we're all all but he always started something, and then they put somebody else in, like, after yeah. five or six issues. Like, he never went solid with any character for any prolonged length of time. And he set the bar so high that in every uh, in every uh, series we're going to talk about, once he left the series, it was never quite the same for me, anyway. Yeah. And uh, one of the reasons I think why the three of us love him so much is that we are all horror fans. We love horror characters, horror films, horror comics, and Mike Plug draws horror comics. Yeah. So we'll kick it off with Marvel Spotlight Werewolf by Night. This is the second appearance of Werewolf by Night, and this is Mike Plug inside and out. So you can see this Bride of Frankenstein kind of like woman character. It just, it draws you right in, you know? He had this flair for the dramatic, kind of like Jim Steranko, I always thought. But he had his own style. It was very gothic and atmospheric. Very right? eerie. Yep. I think it captured that whole Hammer film thing that was going yeah, on Yeah, yeah, as well as the Universal horror films. Yeah. I think he really had a, a, a feel for these horror characters, especially. I mean, that's that's what a weird, that's what we know the Wolfman looks like, right? Yeah. yeah. Right? You know? But I, again, like, the woman has that Bride of Frankenstein kind of feel with the, with the white stripe in her hair. Yep. It's like an evil Bride of Frankenstein yeah. kind of there. And the claw, I don't remember, but <laughs> something, we know that there's some another sinister character here in the background. It's her son, actually. You know? Yeah. But you got to open up and find out, yeah. you know? So, but Mike Plew, his artwork says it all. Uh, all right. These are books all from my collection, by the way. Yep. Pete and I are taking turns. Yep. So we all, uh, and I have, I think I have, like, any, everything he's ever done, except for that very first Ghost Rider, I think all the other books I've got. Uh, so here he also worked briefly on the Call the Destroyer series. And again, uh, as great as he was a horror, he's also good at the sword and sorcery barbarian type of thing, as you can see by there. There's great artwork in this, and that is a absolute fantastic Fantastic cover. I, I would have loved to have seen a Conan book. Oh, that. hell yeah. Could you imagine if he like continued on Conan after Barry Windsor? Oh, yeah, like, and no, no disrespect to John Bushima because I love him and I love his yeah. work. But man, I would have loved to have seen Plug on Conan. I think that would have been a natural progression. It would have yeah. been nice. Marvel Spotlight number four. I picked this up at a con, and then Love I didn't that notice that it was ripped at the bottom. Yeah. That's why it was so cheap. <laughs> That's a great cover, though. And yeah. the, interior, yeah. the interiors in that is so good. Yeah, again, with the, the gothic style, mm -hmm. you know, that eerie touch. It's just amazing detail with Mike Flugart. You know, and then, uh, of course, Werewolf Go Night got his own uh, book, and Plug, I believe, did at least some or parts of the first dozen or so. Covers and interiors, and again, that just that looks like the Wolfman. That's why I liked yeah. it so much. Uh, and even the people, the way he drew the people, and you know, you, this is a horror comics, right? That, that look of horror, the look of Shara, right? Shara, <laughs> <Shara. laughs> Marvel Spotlight number six, the second appearance of Ghost Rider. Again, he was just so ripe for this character. Uh, that character was never ever drawn the same. After Again, that. if they rebooted with, with him doing the art today, I would totally be there. I, I don't buy a lot of new books. I would buy that, you know? Yeah. Uh, he also was amazing on The Monster of Frankenstein. I mean, just that's just gothic horror oh. right there. I mean, would love that. It's just like a painting. It's so good. It's so good. And again, once he left the Frankenstein series, it wasn't quite the same. This is probably my favorite Ghost Rider cover of all. Again, yeah. Marvel Spotlight. This is number nine. That's, that's I gotta say, that's my favorite. There's too. a that's lot going on in this cover. Isn't it? Yeah. The Mike Plug art, you know, it's just so amazing. The detail that he has is just such a nice finesse to, yep. to the way he draws. Bikers, fire, giant snakes, <laughs> Ghost Rider. I mean, you know, got a damsel in distress. I mean, you got everything on there, right? Doesn't get better. <laughs> All right, here, more Frankenstein monster, right? It's just awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. 
Uh, yeah, so we we were kind of jumped in some of the magazines that you know again this is stuff that you don't see every day. Uh, he did the original Planet of the Eight magazine, which is great stuff too. Uh, hard to find. What, Real. What number is that? That's page? number one. That is. Wow. Okay. Um, Look at the attention to detail on that. That is just. You know, I don't know a lot of guys at Marvel who could do something like that. Yeah, that I gotta say, he really captured those original films. You may have to break that open. Yeah, well, we can break that a bit later. But um, it's just uh, again, I I think his art too was really well done for black and white. You know, not everybody. Colin also, I thought was another one. Uh, How long you had this, Kirk? This one actually, um, I got about two or three years ago. Okay, not that not that long ago. Oh yeah, look at that. That's yeah, I mean, <laughs> all, I did, all I had to do was see one panel. I'm you like, know, yeah, yeah he, he, that's classic he, Plug. Oh, it's just, yeah. But yeah. he's up there. Yeah, look at this bad boy up there. Ooh, hold on, let's see. We got a splash page. There. Oh so, yeah. So, well, there's photos of regular apes too. If you like, if you were. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. I got to get these. I uh, get you know, these. and again, such such great books. Um, pain to find, though, because it, as yeah. I said, it's it, all this stuff was so hard. The magazines, the Curtis mags are a pain to get, you know. He gets, you know, look at, look at that, that ape face there. Isn't that a great ape face? That's classic <laughs> Plug. Oh, I'm going to tell you. Plug. Plug. Oh, I love this. Wow. I am jealous. I need to go find some of these. Yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. You, know, you, see, you look at this stuff and you're like, damn it, i got to go find that. And, uh, you know, with eBay and all that, it's really bad because you can sit there, you know, after you're done watching this video, go out and literally order it. I know, it, yeah. Which yeah, is not always too. cost effective. but <laughs> wow. um, Very nice. You know, just, really just cool. great stuff. Uh, Pete mentioned before, Frankenstein, Monster Frankenstein, number one. Mike Plug again, cover, awesome. and inside yeah. art. Again, I mean, it, hammer, right? That's yeah. Look at that yeah, hammer. Yeah. yeah, it almost looks like Peter Sellers. That's Doctor Frankenstein. Peter Cushing, you mean? Peter Cushing, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just it makes you want to buy it. Yeah. The cover, yeah. you know, you want to open it up and see what goes on inside. You know, even if you already do know the story of Frankenstein, it just draws you right in. Yeah. Very well drawn. Stuff you know? is, uh, yeah, it's really solid. Perhaps my favorite Mike Blue cover of all time, and one of my favorite covers of all time, the giant size, giant size man yeah, thing. thing. Number <laughs> let, one. Let's, let's all be uh, adults here, all mm -hmm. right? Uh, but here, his epic battle with the glob. I mean, two, two like swamp creatures just duking it out. This is amazing. And of course, the glob also fought the Hulk, right? That's right. Uh, also, man thing number five. So I would love, Bill, if you would open this one up. Uh, this is perhaps my favorite Man-Thing issue ever. Oh, uh, yeah? Um, the story is just so amazing in here. It's so tragic and so, like, emotional. Yeah. I remember being a little kid and buying that off the rack and reading that. And just the artwork and the story about this clown whose just life has just wow. gone to shit. And he just is, you know, it's, it's just so it's tragic. Oh, man. Oh, uh, yeah. And the artwork is just so I'll Just, just show you right there. beautiful in here. Uh, yeah, it's just, ugh. Oh. Page one. That's a, a lot of this stuff was, you know. I gotta say, the art is fantastic, but the scripting is uh, yeah. yeah the colors are Steve great. Gerber, right? Steve yeah, Gerber, yeah Steve Gerber, uh, Man Thing is one of my favorites. Oh yeah. You know, non superhero. If comic. I remember, they made like a, a rec record album out of this particular issue. Is that yeah. one of the ones yeah. that did the, the uh, yeah. okay. for the Man Thing? Yeah, yeah, for that particular issue right there. So I they did the whole that. narration. Yeah, but the no, Man Thing YouTube. doesn't talk. No, this is written in third person narration. This whole story. The man thing? I don't know if I would have bought that for a kid, though, to listen to the phone Because, right, because it's not it's a very depressing story. I was going to say, yeah. it's not, yeah, if, you, if, you, if you're having a bad day, this is not the book to read. Yeah, but it's just so well written. Tragic story of uh, the man thing. To, yeah. I mean. Ted Salas. Ah. Uh, there's I a good say, panel I, down here. I really like Swamp Thing. This guy's thing. face. I'm more of a man thing thing. Yeah, I've always been more. I, I like Swamp Thing, too, but man thing is, is where it's been for me. And you know he's he really popped has always popped up everywhere. Yeah, you know, I mean, Man Thing is probably more guest stars in other in other magazines than anybody else. The man does get around. So that's where this this big brute like thinks that he's you know he goes and beats up all these guys and he thinks he's <laughs> going to be able to take the man thing and he that does not turn out in his favor. Uh, that's a good plan. But this yeah, <laughs> because the man thing burns anything that has fear. Yeah, his yeah. touch burns anything that has fear. Yeah. So let's look for that. Fear burns at the touch of the man thing. Yeah, that's it, yeah. 
Oh, ah, last page. Yeah. Uh-oh, spoiler. Definitely classic. Yeah, I, I absolutely love that issue. Here's good. another good one. I got another, more man thing. Another Plug classic right there. Another classic man thing. And again, uh, I think after he left this series, it, it was still pretty good, but not quite the same. He, you know, Bill made a great point before. It's like he touched so many of these series from the beginning and left such an impression that no matter who they would have brought in afterwards, yeah. it was never going to be the same. I mean, look at this. This is number six. And we're not showing all of them, because there's, there's plenty. You'll see more in upcoming episodes uh, about Werewolf by Night and uh, Man Thing covers. Oh, when but, it comes yeah. to favorite covers, yeah. yeah. These are all from my collection, by the way. I said, Pete, some uh, legwork. I'm mm-hmm. logging them over here. Plus, you would have picked the same things I picked. Yeah, exactly. All right, we got one more to show oh, the curtain. One, one more. Yeah. More, everything... more, more Planet of the... Yeah, we showed these. Yeah. More okay. Planet of the Apes. That's more cool. Planet of the Apes. This look at is, that. That's number two. Um, again, I just got this recently from our buddies at Zap. Um, again, solid. Over there. Over there. Oh, all right. There you go. I got it. I got it. Right. You got so, again, really solid stuff. I love these old Curtis magazines. Hard to find. Definitely worth it. Um, nice. Strong. Look, look at it. Because these, these were like painted covers. These are like. Yeah. Like, these, nice. these are really, just, you know. Yeah, he had a thing with man. He drew, he drew the apes so well. Holy smokes. Yeah, I, I mean, again, if you watch the original series, he really caught that whole flair for these characters. I, totally worth getting. Sorry. Yeah. So we were talking before we went on on camera. Uh, the Marvel also did a Planet of the Apes color comic, which ran about a dozen issues or so. And I went and bought almost the entire series, thinking because they were listed that Mike Plug did the, did the artwork on all of them. He didn't do the artwork on any of them. He actually did it for the Black and White magazine. And uh, I was like, I got all these. I'm like, wait a second, this isn't Plug. I was like, like uh, oh, I was so disappointed, so disappointed. Yeah, but, you but know, now I got to track these down. That's all right. Yeah, because he wore he did quite a few of these, right? Yeah, I believe so. Because I've only got a couple of the early issues. Because as I said, these things are a pain in the ass to find. And when you do find them, sometimes like you'll get a good deal, but then other times the guy's like, oh, these are ultra rare, and he wants sixty bucks for them. I'm like. You know, like, see ya. See ya. Yeah, <laughs> so, but you know, eight, ten bucks, maybe fifteen bucks. Yeah, yeah that's you know. do. I, when you're paying six dollars, seven dollars for a new book, um, eight bucks for a Planet of the Eight magazine from the seventies, I'm in. I'm yeah. totally yeah. So definitely. Okay, your glasses ones that. That is nineteen seventy four. Seventy four, and the movie came out in sixty four. The first one. Yeah, yeah. The, the sequ- so when this came out, the sequels were already in yeah, and, very, and the TV show, right? You know, because if you check this one, they, they list that uh, they've got an interview with Rod Serling, who wrote the first screenplay okay. uh, from the t- Twilight Zone and all that. So, uh, but this, you know, these were great. And you got to remember, too, back then there was no internet. So if you wanted to know about, like, what these movies were all about, you had to buy magazines like this because they'd give you interviews with the guys who did the, the effects and all that stuff and... It was it was kind of where you got your info. No, yeah, no uh, TMZ or anything like that. That's right. <laughs> and we, you know, we were also talking too back to Mike Plug. It's like if you go on and Google Mike Plug, you can actually find like prints and drawings that he's done over the years on various other characters, like you were talking about, like a Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde mm-hmm. creature. I was trying to show those images before we taped, but I couldn't find them. But they're <laughs> some are color and some are black and white. He's got sketches. You know, also you can find all sorts of stuff. He, on I think him. he has books for sale. You can check eBay. Yeah. For that, if you like Mike Plug art, it's definitely worth looking at or putting in your collection. If you have books of art, there's definitely got to have a Mike Plug book. Yeah, yeah. There's there's something because I, I noticed that too, but I, I don't have any of that. It, it's you know again, so much stuff out there. Yeah. So there you have it, guys. Another uh, tribute to a great one, Mr. Right. Mike Plug, a guy I wish we would we would have saw more of in uh, in comics. But you know what? Treasure the stuff that he did do, and absolutely, uh, like, it's yeah. one, some of my favorites. So uh, for uh, the comic book geezers crew, I am Pete. I'm Wild Bill, Kirk, and as always, we thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for sub- subscriptions and your comments, and please click the like button if you like this video, and click on the notification bell if you want to be notified every time we pop out a video. You'll get instant access to it. So again, thanks for being here, and come back real soon. We'll see you soon. Take care, everyone. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.